Behind me is my pond and stream I built about four years ago when I was just a youngin. And you can see it's got some serious issues. The biggest issue is we always get all the brush cut down with weed whackers and they cut the cord like two years ago and it has not run since then. So today I'm gonna be putting the cord in some conduit, adding a little switch. Otherwise you have to use the breaker to turn it on and off, which is not very easy for everyone. But the most exciting part about this whole thing is up here. I don't even know where it is anymore. I have to find it. Up here. There is, so the water runs up the hill for the stream, but I also added a fire hose. So I will be showing you guys that, which is basically like a little bit of a fire hose home protection system. The way this system works is you can't really have a pond without a fence around it because you don't want people to be drowning in it since we don't have any fences around our property up here. So it's all, all the water is stored underground and I think it's like a hundred gallon or 80, 70 gallon, 70 gallon, 70 gallon, 70 gallon, like a hundred gallon tank. So we have like four or 500 gallons of water. If I did that math right, and it's all stored underground here. And this is probably pretty gross, but there's these filters. And basically that the pump is right underneath those and it pumps it back up the hill. So first thing I'm gonna do is get all this dug out so we can get this conduit in and install the switch and then we'll see if the pump works. Just gonna wet this whole area down. Time to dig. Okay, I have finished the trench to as deep as I'm gonna go. Sure, you can make it deeper and make it like a proper 16 inch trench or whatever. There's just way too many rocks here to do that for me. So I'm happy with this. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay the conduit and then we can feed the wire through. All right, so I think the junction box with the switch is gonna be right about here because this is kind of where the cord is destroyed. So I'm just making sure Cutting it off past where it got hit with the weed whacker. Plan is we're gonna go like 90 up here. Same deal here. Got some of this PVC electrical glue here. Nice cutting off the wire protector casing here. I don't know what it's really called. Okay, I was just informed by my father that I cannot use these switches because this is 240 volt. So there's two hot wires and they're on different phases. I thought we could just attach both to each side negative. So switches, nope. We already have a switch over there. This is just gonna be extra. So instead I'm just gonna take the wire ties and tie these wires together. Got everything all hooked up here. Just need to backfill this trench. My uh, switch. And let's plug it in and see what happens. No guarantees this pump even still works. So we'll see. It's running. There we go, and it works. 
The little stinky cat has been running like three years and it's probably gonna overflow in a bunch of places because a lot of dirt has built up. There we go. It works perfectly. Fixed a couple of the major leaks up there. Uh, when I built it, I never dug deep enough behind the tree there because the root turned the way and it just fell down the hill. But it looks absolutely awesome. As you can see, um, this is like a lot of years in the making, just doing a little bit at a time. Almost all of these rocks are from just like around my house here and my neighbor's houses, maybe before there were fences. Don't ask, don't tell, it's fine. Um, but it looks good and I'm stoked that it's running again. So probably done for the day, just watch it for a little bit and then do the fire hose tomorrow. Good morning. So we got the fire hose out here, but before we do that, I am gonna fix the rocks up a little bit here. And basically all these are just stacked uh, by hand with gravity. At the top, I did use some like grout and try to keep it together. And so every winter when we do use this thing, afterwards, after winter, everything kind of shifts and you have to fix it a little bit, but this is a pretty big kind of collapse. So I'm gonna fix this up. So all I've done here is I just take some rocks and figure out kind of which is the best way they fit. And then sometimes it all falls down and I have to do it again. But that's kind of just a way to figure it out without using some sort of mortar to hold it all together. So put this little guy in there. A little bit of an art to it. I think that looks a good amount better. You can still see the tarp underneath a little bit in some places, but I tried to fill it in more so it looks a little bit more natural. Um, so I think we're pretty much good for the stream. Let's do the fire hose. The idea now is I have the hose filling this up and we have a limited amount of water storage here, but say a wildfire was actually coming and you would not still be here. This is really kind of for fun, kind of like more like if a little wildfire is down there and you want to stay and make sure everything's fine, but not anything that's like, this is not going to stop a forest fire, but we're trying to maximize our water capacity in the tanks and also in the entire stream. So I'm going to let it run and fill up. So we have the four or 500 gallons here, and then we have another couple hundred gallons actually just sitting in the stream. So when you turn off the stream, this thing's going to overflow but at least when you have it running, that will all be capacity. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick on the stream here. And then you can see I got some targets down there. We're gonna go try to put out the fire. So if we did know something was coming in the far future, we could turn on all these sprinklers here, manually, remotely. So we'll press run. And this would just help get the entire area nice and wet before we start any fire suppression on our own. So the fire sprinklers have been running down there, but let's say the spot fires are still advancing. We're gonna take our fire hose and get it hooked up to our pond over here. This is an inch and a half booster line. And it just connects right here. And then we're gonna wanna lay this hose out all the way down there flat before we put any water in it. So 
most important part, which is kind of difficult, is to keep this all flat and not kinked. And if you were to put water in it before and then it was kinked, it would kink up and you'd have a big issue. So we're just gonna unroll it as far as we need it. And then take our $7 Chinese nozzle. Hose is made in America, we love that. Nozzle could use some work. Now let's go turn it on. To activate the line, we're just gonna pull this big valve. You can see the fire hose starts filling up with water. Okay, to open the nozzle, big twist. Got a pretty good string here. And you can see, stand it back a little bit. This is our fire. Got that one. Got that one. Got that one. You also can adjust the nozzle, make it go a little bit further, a little less water. We're getting up close, putting out some spot fires. This would actually work pretty well. And it's not gonna stop a forest fire, but if you have a fire 50 miles away and there's embers, at least it would help get everything wet and down and maybe put out little fires. system host system all right all in all got the stream running again it looks good got the fire suppression system kind of back online obviously you would never want to stay behind in wildfire if they tell you to leave you leave there's not really a question about it because your life is a lot more important than any of these trees or even this house or basically anything your life is as important as it gets maybe besides jesus but uh I think that thing would definitely help a little bit. Wouldn't stop a forest fire, but it would help with some spot fires and help get the whole area wetted down. And thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below on what I could have done differently. There's always things that are like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing some of those comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.